New Florida rules cause some concerns. It puts a target on our back. For the transgender community. A night of music, food, and drinks. Our main goal is to unite all of our community in here. With jazz in the jungle. And a fan that will stand out from the rest. That's how diehard of a fan I am. As he prepares to watch them play in the Super Bowl. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Isabel Rivera. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. Today is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. Cell phone video rolling on the fiery aftermath of a plane crash here in Florida. Today, the community of Clearwater is reeling after a deadly plane accident claimed the lives of several residents at a mobile home park. The plane crash last night was a result of a full engine failure. As first responders from the Clearwater Fire Department confirmed, the crash set several mobile homes ablaze, which led to multiple injuries and deaths. I can confirm that we have several fatalities, both from the aircraft and within the mobile home. First responders also claimed the pilot, who's yet to be identified, reported May Day before the crash. Firefighters reported to the scene at Route 715 to see the plane in flames crash into a mobile home. Many details remain unknown as the crash remains under investigation from authorities. A potential identity crisis for some Floridians after a change in state regulations which requires citizens on getting new driver's license to identify by their gender at birth. As Kaplan's Estefania Calandino reports, members of the transgender community say they fear for their safety. It puts a target on our back. Nicole Parker is one of the transgender people now worried about what comes next now that they can't choose their gender on driver's license. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles released this memo on Friday making sex a sign at birth, not gender identity, the determining factor for someone's gender. This impacts replacements and new licenses, not existing ones. The state says the switch is important to enhance security and reliability. It puts law enforcement in a very, very, very awkward and tenuous position. Law enforcement consultant Randy Nelson says the changes could hinder someone from being identified accurately and is concerned about the impacts across communities that weren't involved in the decision-making process. I know we're, we're divided. You know, I've never seen in my lifetime uh, the country is as divided as it is. And it's about everything. It's not only social and cultural things. Parker changed their ID to correspond with their gender identity nearly a decade ago and feels what's happening now is moving things in the wrong direction. For Capeling News, I'm Stephanie Calandrielo. Plans are already in the works for next Thursday night after a wild night at Miami Beach Botanical Garden. Kaplan News reporter Laura Paul Free was there as Miami Jazz Bookings relaunched their outdoor concert series, Jazz in the Jungle. Jazz fans gathered at the Miami Beach Botanical Gardens for a relaunch of the outdoor music series, Jazz in the Jungle. Guests enjoyed three sets from the Miami-based soul and jazz group Fat Produce as they explored the beauty of the Botanical Garden. So uh, this is uh, an event that me and my husband uh, brought here to the Miami Beach Botanical Garden. We had this event in Little River and we just like uh, reunite all of our friends from uh, Raw Figs, which is our friend Sofia, to our friends from Bocadoro and to our friends in the music industry to just bring everybody together and gather all the locals here at the beach. Music wasn't the only thing offered at this event. Guests could indulge in food from local vendors and participate in a drawing session from Raw Figs. Spread it out, put it up on here. I've been to events with Raw Fix before and always enjoy them, so it was nice to get to do that as well tonight. I'm usually attracted to events surrounding creativity and music, so it kind of went hand in hand. So it's the 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 goal here is to bring out the community and like if it, even if it's for like ira paella or if it's for a like road drawing class or for coming here to listen to the jets, our main goal is to unite all of our community in here to have a beautiful Thursday night. If you couldn't make it tonight, have no worries. Expect to see Jazz in the Jungle every Thursday here at the Miami Botanical Gardens. Reporting at Miami Beach for Kaplan News, I'm Laura Palfrey. 
For those sick of winter, the nation's beloved rodent has some good news. Phil emerged from his burrow in Pennsylvania at the dawn this morning and did not see his shadow. That predicts we will see an early spring. The groundhogs of the town have been predictors of the season since 1887, and according to the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center, this month will see above average temperatures across parts of the U.S., so Phil may be right this year. A moment for a high school student that is described by his coach as a fairy tale. Classmates erupting in cheers for Robert Pissarillo as they watch his dream come true. As reporter Justin Barney from WJXT takes us to the middle school in Jacksonville, Florida, where it all happened. Robert Piccarillo has always wanted to be a high school basketball player. And for one very special night last week at Middleburg, he was. Born with a heart condition that required five surgeries throughout life, playing varsity sports wasn't an option. Piccarillo found another way to be involved. For the last four years, Piccarillo has served as the team manager for Middleburg, and last week, Coach Sean Sweeney made Piccarillo's dream come true. He was suiting up with the Broncos on senior night. I'm just kidding, Robert. You know, that day I got emails from teachers talking about how happy they were that he was going to get to play in that game. And it was just a, a special night and something I'll never forget. Since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a basketball player and just play for a team. But boss, because of my heart, I can't. So I'm just, I just try to find ways to be able to participate and do what I love, and which is participating in basketball and just playing it. Sweeney said he would have been thrilled if Piccolo made one shot. And he did. Then he made another. And another. And when the Broncos put the ball in Piccarillo's hands with the clock running out, he nailed the buzzer beater to cap a 12 point game. And Broncos fans rushed the court to celebrate their team manager turned three point ace. There were plenty of tears to go around and the memories to last a lifetime. It felt completely different than sitting on the bench. Wish I had more time, wish I had more games. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it felt amazing. I wish I could just, you know what I'm saying, play more. I, I kind of told the guys afterwards, I was like, it doesn't always work this way. Like, this was a fairy tale storybook ending for him. And, you know, he just, it, it doesn't, it, the nice guy doesn't always finish first. And I felt like that happened uh, Friday night. The nice guy finished first. That was w WJXT's Justin Barney. The team manager's dream came true, and it was a night he will never forget. After a game in Saudi Arabia, Lionel Messi's Inter-Miami Road show landed earlier today in Hong Kong. That's still ahead, and so is this story. Let's go, go Niners! Yeah, let's go! Just ahead of the Super Bowl, a fan sees a way to turn what cancer took from him into a tribute to his favorite team. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. really use a new tablet. I just don't have the money. Let me ask you something. Do you have a Pell Grant? Yes. You do know you can get a free tablet, right? Did you say free? Yeah, free. It's simple. And the application is done in the store. I could really use a tablet. Go get, go get one! <sighs> Another satisfied customer. Stop by Panthetech in the Graham Center at FIU MMC today to speak with one of our associates to get your free tablet. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have something called prediabetes. Take the one minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I 
eyes on the prize for the Super Bowl from a fan with a unique tribute to his favorite team. One San Francisco 49ers fan will stand out over all others at the Super Bowl in just over a week. He's taken his love for the team to a whole new level, literally making it part of his body. He has a prosthetic eye emblazoned with the team's logo, and it made him last year's 49er of the year. KOVR's reporter Hunter Sowards has more. I've been a 49er fan my whole life. Uh, my first game was back in 1987 when I was five. His Niner pride is easy to see. They call me Eye of the Niner. Ray Pena is known for his love of the 49ers football team with a garage of red and gold to prove it. You know, next thing you know, I got a three car garage full of stuff. But his story, it's not all that meets the eye. After being diagnosed with cancer at just 30 years old. I had to remove my eye within six months or it was gonna spread to both my eyes. He had just one question after a successful surgery. I asked him if he could make me a 49er eye. That's how diehard of a fan I am. And the rest is history. I, I too. <laughs> His daughter might be watching from home, but Ray's eye and pride is gearing up for the big game. And we get to go to the Super Bowl and be in the lower end zone for less than it costs for one ticket right now. This is the very first jersey that I ever got. My wife bought it for me. Dripping in red and gold from floor to ceiling, Ray walks us through his Niner sanctuary. We were the fan of the year, so they put us in Sports Illustrated back in February. With letters from John Lynch and memories through the decades. It's got a little bit of everything, man. This 49ers faithful has his eye on the prize. Let's go Niners! Yeah, let's go! You didn't say it. Why didn't you say it? You're going to say, let's go Niners. Do it. That was KOVR's Hunter Soares reporting. The 49er fan is also an aspiring rapper who uses his nickname as Eye of the Niner as his stage name. Formula One racing will see some big changes as seven-time champion driver Lewis Hamilton leaves Mercedes for the rival Ferrari team. After 11 years with Mercedes, he exercised a release option in his contract and will join Ferrari for the 2025 season. The 39-year-old is one of two drivers who share the record for the most F1 world titles. Analysts believe Hamilton sees this as his last chance to drive for Ferrari. After losing 6-0, Inter-Miami landed in Hong Kong earlier this morning as a part of their first international tour. Training sessions will start tomorrow, Saturday at 5.30 p.m. local time, but at 4.30 a.m. on Eastern, the team will play against the Hong Kong team on Sunday at 4 p.m. local time and 3 a.m. Eastern. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Bill is a family man. He invests his money wisely and provides a good life for his children. Just one problem. He often opens emails from senders he doesn't know. And his computer is not password protected. One day, Bill checked his bank account and... 94% of malware attacks originate from emails. Don't be like Bill. Take your cybersecurity seriously. That's all the time we have for News Break. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. I'm Isabel Rivera. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.